The age of generative AI in our search engines is upon us. Just this week, both Google and Microsoft made major announcements about integrating conversational AI into their products. And while Google really just kind of unveiled that its Lambda-powered conversation engine will be called Bard, today Microsoft had a whole slate of announcements about changes coming to its Edge browser and the Bing search engine. The new Bing and the new Edge will be available to a select list of people starting today uh, and will be available on mobile as well as desktop. We were lucky enough to be in the select group to be able to check this out. We're going to start with Bing. The four changes are coming in terms of search, answers, chat, and create. Search is kind of the most obvious and direct change. In fact, when you go to the new Bing.com, you'll notice that the search box is different. It's bigger now. Instead of a single line input field for text, you get a box that looks more like the submission or creation boxes in Twitter or Facebook. The character limit here is a thousand, and you're supposed to be encouraged to be a bit more conversational in your queries this time. There's stuff under the hood about how the new Bing understands your search inputs now. It's using updated AI-powered uh, models to better understand or contextualize your queries. That's not really stuff we can demo in this video. The second part is answers. What you can visually see is a new column to the right, in addition to the typical search results on the left. And this little box here uh, will show how Bing thought about what answers it's serving you. It's taking in cues like your geolocation, your previous history, the types of sources that are available, for example. It's also looking to improve itself over time. So there's also a new kind of feedback box uh, on the top right of this dialogue that allows you to tell Bing whether you liked the results or not. But onto the two next components, which to me are actually the most interesting new developments in the new Bing. The first is chat. Now, if you scroll up or swipe down from the answers page, you'll go into the chat window. You can also do this by tapping the chat link on the top of the results. Now, in some of my testing with the new Bing, when I scrolled up the chat, the chat interface was already looking for answers to the query I had put in on the Bing homepage. This didn't work the same way all the time. Sometimes I had to repeat my query. Basically, think of this layout as the physical manifestation of what Microsoft is calling your AI co-pilot. In here, you're encouraged to be way more conversational than you would be with, say, Bing's regular search bar or even a Google search. So after you get your initial round of answers from Bing, you can follow up with uh, questions without all every little bit of the keywords or context that you provided earlier and the system will still know what it is that you're talking about in fact it'll keep all the context until you hit that sweep or the broom icon to the left of the uh, input field to start a new topic and clean the slate altogether so very frequently, I was just asking it to generate schedules, itineraries, meal plans, and workout plans for me. Uh, and in my follow-ups, for example, when I asked it to generate a 30-minute uh, abs and arms workout with no sit-ups, I then followed up with, how about an hour-long version? And it was able to just use that and repeat the same search, but change 30 minutes to an hour. This interface honestly feels kind of familiar to anyone who has worked with a chat support agent on your bank or your shopping website so far. It's just a little bit more natural because you're not fully relying on prompts or badges to take you through the process. And you don't need to wait till you reach a actual human agent for the conversation to then feel more natural. In fact, I've been very impressed by how the language has been very conversational so far in the new Bing's chat interface. Create is really where the implementation or the integration with OpenAI's ChatGPT shines. Like I said before, we were able to use this to come up with meal plans as demonstrated during the keynote, workout uh, routines or, or travel itineraries. I recently had a very harrowing experience trying to come up with a travel plan for my family of five for Los Angeles, so I decided to make Bing do all that bad work for me. It was actually able to come up with a proposed plan for a six day trip to Los Angeles for me. And it actually suggested places that other people who live in Los Angeles have told me I have to go see. Now, of course, I didn't get this answer perfectly on my first attempt with the new Bing. Actually, it, it took a few attempts to actually get the result that I was expecting. It looked like I needed to be very precise in my language for a bit, but then it felt like there's some machine learning here that's understanding what I actually am looking for because on subsequent attempts, I actually did get the results I wanted. 
at the moment, uh, the chat interface is also just text-based. I mean, there are some links that it will share that have previews that are including videos and pictures. But eventually, for example, if you're asking for um, in an itinerary to Snoqualmie and you're asking it to subsequently tell you what the best spots for photography are, it might be able to include pictures within this chat interface itself. And so you can see for yourself exactly what the most Instagram-worthy areas are. The new Bing will be available to anyone uh, as long as you go to bing.com. I mean, that's obviously it has to come out of beta. But if you use Edge, there are a few more uh, additional bonuses that you can use. So the main benefit of uh, the AI Copilot feature in Edge is that you can use these new Bing features regardless of what website you're on. Just by pressing the new B sort of button on the top right uh, of the page, you can open the Bing AI Copilot. There are two main pages here. One is the basic chat interface as well as Compose, and we'll get to that later. During a demo, Microsoft showed off how it was able to go to a Gap earnings report and get the Bing assistant to kind of summarize and show you the key takeaways from here. What I thought was very impressive was that during the demo, they were able to just tell Bing or Edge to compare the results to arrival companies. So it's telling me not only the stats that it found, but also that it's saying, therefore, Lululemon performed better than Gap in terms of revenue, comparable sales and earnings per share in the fourth quarter of 2021. Um, I'm going to try to get it to generate a table. Let's see. So it's now starting a search for Lululemon's financial results and actually making a table within this window. That's really impressive. I've not seen anything AI based sort of do that on its own before. I can really imagine using this to uh, come up with specs tables comparing, say, the Galaxy S23 Ultra to the Galaxy S22 Ultra, really just simplifying my workflow for me. That's probably scratching the surface of what you can do with this new feature. I haven't spent that much time with it yet, and I can't wait to go into a deeper dive to tell you more. Uh, for now, though, what's also interesting is you can go over to the Create or Compose panel, and that unlocks a lot more features. Probably the most relatable use case of this feature is in writing emails. Now, I take a lot of personal joy in crafting witty, charming emails to get my friends to do things. But if you're not that sort of person and you just want a machine to do that for you, you now have the option. So I asked Edge to craft an email for me, convincing my head of video, Brian O, to come with me on this trip to Seattle. So over on the Create page, it has a different prompt box that asks what you want to write about. And then there's a lot of little questions afterwards to set parameters, like what sort of uh, format is this? Is it an email? Is it a post? You can also define uh, parameters like the tone, whether it be professional, funny, or enthusiastic, as well as the length between short, medium, and long. Hit generate and a draft will come out that you can paste over into your compose screen with just one click. So far, this has been just a few hours of a preview with the new Bing and Edge. And honestly, I feel like there's so much more I can do and try. So this is just a hands-on uh, of what we saw today. Of course, I'll be eagerly and excitedly testing the rest of this out because it's, it kind of feels like we're in a new era. What can AI do for us? And what should we let it do for us? These are questions that Microsoft and its partner OpenAI are considering it is at the top of their minds as they explore this process. We will continue to keep watch on this as well, along with more testing of the new Bing and the new Edge. For that and more coverage of the world of AI, consumer technology, and more, make sure you subscribe to Engadget.